Am I the a-hole for telling my siblings the real reason why my parents got divorced? I, 22 male, have three other siblings, 18 male, 15 male, and 12 female. Our parents are no longer together because of my mom's 42 female infidelity. She was seeing my best friend's dad. When my father found out, he kicked her out, and she ended up moving with her affair partner and broke two marriages. This all happened six years ago, and my siblings saw my dad as the bad guy who kicked their mother out. 15 male and 12 female decided to live with my mom and dad only had them on weekends. My 18 male brother stayed with us because he was closer to my dad already, but didn't know what caused our family to fall apart and also seemed to resent my dad. I visited my mom as often as I could and she seemed happy to have me, but I was the only one who knew what happened. My dad never bad talked my mother and never let my siblings know why they split, even if he had to be seen as the bad guy who kicked her out. And my mom never took any responsibility of what she did to our family. They get along with Jeff, mom's husband. But I did, but lost a lot of respect for him when he went after my mom. My dad will get married to Rose this October 21st, my late grandma's birthday. And he told my siblings that he wished to have them with him. They started being so mean to him and basically shaming for getting married and accused him of cheating because he started dating Rose a long ago. Even 18 male did. They really hate Rose because she came into our lives like six months after my mom was kicked out. So I asked them to stop. My dad isn't confrontational, so he told me to leave it like that. Then they started accusing Rose of being the reason my parents fell apart. But I told them that the reason was my mom's infidelity. Their faces turned red and asked me if I was joking. But I said no. They got back to my mom's house and two days later they were back asking to stay with my dad full time. Apparently, they confronted her and her husband about what happened. I called my mom to see if everything is okay, but she didn't answer. I went to her house and she was distant. We didn't talk much about it. Then her husband texted me later to call me the a-hole for telling my siblings about my mom's affair and they seem to hate her now. I know it's hard for my mom now because she loves us, but my dad shouldn't be seen as the evil person and she as the great flawless parent. Plus, Rose shouldn't be seen as a home wrecker when my mom is. Am I the a-hole for letting them know? Now for the top comments. Not stay home. Your mom and her affair partner have been lying to your siblings for years. They deserve the consequences of one, their affair, two, their subsequent lies over years, and three, nor defending your dad or Rose. If they had wanted to keep the status quo and keep their betrayal and dishonesty a secret, they should have made an effort to welcome Rose and try to discourage your siblings from vilifying Rose and your dad. This is like the most brain-dead easy part of it too. If someone you screwed over is keeping your secret for you, you should make it as easy as possible to help them keep that secret. Having two-thirds of their kids hate them for what you did seems like a no-brainer in terms of the truth will come out. Literally just some lip service about how we weren't happy together and some other such nonsense would have gone a long way. That and encouraging her younger kids to split time more equitably. And this probably never comes out. Opie's father is a saint for never mentioning this to them. It must have torn him up in a big way. I love to see taking the high road pay off though. I hope the kids, dad and Rose develop a beautiful loving family together. Not today, ho. I'm sorry you're going through this. I wish I couldn't relate. I'm the only child of parents who got divorced because of my mom's infidelity. She remarried and had a new child. A fresh start. I was the only remnant of her past that was a reminder of her mistake. Growing up, I carried that secret in me because I could sense that everyone was trying to pretend like it was not a thing. My sibling was also much younger than me and I was very protective of her. I didn't want her to grow up with the weight of all of this before she was old enough to understand complexity of good and bad. However, I didn't deserve to be isolated with this burden then or now and neither do you. You were not the a-hole but people will try their best to make you out to be the villain or the problem. You were not. What you are is the child of someone who made a mistake that she is now trying to pretend never happened. That is not what mature parents, or adults for that matter, are supposed to do. Such behavior causes more hurt and pain in the long run, not less. What you have allowed for is open communication. Your mom slash stepdad is upset because they are being forced to face the consequences of their actions. Wants that, even if ultimately were for the best for everyone, still cost a lot of hurt to many people. Adults own up to their mistakes, self-reflect, and learn to forgive themselves. Your mom is not acting like such. And frankly, I do not blame your younger siblings for feeling betrayed. The betrayal is ultimately not rooted in her infidelity. Their betrayal is rooted in being lied to. Hopefully your mom will ultimately understand the difference, 
and grew up into being an adult slash parent for her kids. Until then, set strong boundaries for yourself if you need to from her if she is dumping emotional BS on you. You do not deserve that. You did absolutely nothing wrong. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my sister around my daughter after she declared she had no interest in interacting or holding her when she was a baby? I had my daughter eight female when I was 22. My sister was 25 at a time. I don't know when she became child-free, but at my baby shower, she had a frown on her face the whole time and would say things like, Oh, another expensive gift. Wow, could pay for my rent if I sold that. My pregnancy was quite scary, but everything turned out fine. When my family came to the hospital to greet and hold her, my sister refused to even touch her. Her explanation was that she doesn't like small kids, especially babies, and never wants to have them. I was quite sad at this, and asked her why she wouldn't want to interact with her own family, just because she doesn't like or want kids. She just shrugged and handed me a congrats card. The rest of the family was horrified, and she kind of became an outcast at that point. She was always starting some kind of drama with someone. Fast forward to now, a couple months ago, she started showing more interest in my daughter. She'd call and ask what her favorite colors and movies were, drop her presents off on my door. I asked her why. After all this time, she wanted to get to know my daughter. She said it was because my daughter was quite older now and she wasn't a screaming baby. She can hold a conversation now, so I think we'll get along just fine. I shook my head and said she made her decision to not interact with her years ago. I told her she doesn't just get to randomly decide when she wants to act like an aunt. I don't even think you love her. How could you? You don't even call me half the time. She said she was trying to be an aunt. I just had to give her a chance. I told her I had tried giving her many chances and she blew it. She called me an a-hole. Said I couldn't let go of the past and that she knew me getting pregnant was the end of the sister she once knew. She hung up and told my husband everything. He says I have every right to not let her in my daughter's life, but I feel so unsure. The rest of the family agrees. Someone asked if she had been mean to me and the baby at some point, so I'm putting this here as well. After the family started shutting her out, she did talk crap about me and the baby in social media, to others, etc. I did give her many other chances to apologize and be in her niece's life despite this, but she blew it every time. Plus, she had been a problem way before I even got pregnant. She just wasn't pleasant to be around, unfortunately, and most people were done dealing with her. She did stop the drama after a while. She didn't keep talking crap for eight years, but the damage was slash is done. Opie edited the post and let us all know that her sister was being mean on social media and talking bad about her niece. So I'm changing my vote to not the a-hole, and I do think that info should have been in the original post. I'll answer about why I'm hesitant to give her a chance. I feel like she's only trying because she's realized she's lonely, and I'm really the only one that keeps in slight contact with her. I don't want her trying to make a relationship with her out of convenience. Plus, if she decides my daughter is annoying, won't she just leave again? Makes me nervous. Not the whole. Decisions have consequences. Being child-free is fine, but to refuse to interact with someone for almost a decade and then act like she can just waltz back in and everything will be smooth sailing is ridiculous. Life doesn't work like that. She's only thinking of herself and not your child. Your child is a stranger to her. They have no bond. She missed out on her entire life and now selfishly wants back in. You don't need to give her a chance if it means protecting your daughter from people that aren't good for her. She said it couldn't let go of the past. Yes, that is exactly right. As a parent, you cannot let go of the past because it is the best predictor of future events. Your sister may nope on out of your daughter's life again after six months or a year. She considers your daughter optional. She is not. Therefore, you must be her advocate and protect her. If you want to give your sister a chance, she can see your daughter when she is with you or with your mother or husband or some trusted relative. She will have to earn the right to have this relationship. It is not a right. It's a privilege. Not the a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let it go after my parents falsely accused my brother of stealing from their house? I have an older half-brother, Rory. We share the same dad. I live with my mom and stepdad. Rory comes to see me regularly and we usually go out together. I'm 15, Rory is 24 and I have two stepsisters, 11 and 9. A few months ago, some valuable items were stolen from our house. Some jewelry, my stepdad's expensive watches, and some cash. 
They immediately accused Rory of doing it and banned me from seeing him or talking to him. I defended Rory and I was grounded as a result. The accusation was false because that day Rory picked me up outside and never came in. But they didn't believe me and accused me of lying to protect him. The police had no reason to believe it was my brother and they didn't even consider him a suspect. About two weeks ago, the thief was found out as he did the same thing at a relative's house and they had security cameras and eventually confessed to stealing from us as well. It obviously was not Rory. It was my stepdad's nephew who had somehow copied his key without him noticing and used it to break in when nobody was home. I'm angry about all of this and I ask them to apologize to both me and Rory for their false accusations, which my mom said she's happy to do but my stepdad said no and told me I just have to learn to move on. Later that day, I reminded him to be extra careful about his keys when he visits his relatives to be sure nobody steals it and he wouldn't end up accusing people I love for no reason. This morning, he was looking for his sunglasses and couldn't find it and I suggested that maybe I should help him find it before he goes to accuse someone innocent for stealing it. He looked at me and told me to stop being rude. My mom talked to me and told me that I should stop being an a-hole about it and apologize for not letting us move on from the unfortunate incident. I don't see why I should not advise caution when family will be the scapegoat if things go wrong. Am I the a-hole for expecting an apology and not moving on until I get it? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Accusing someone of stealing is a big deal. They just can't accept that they messed it up. Also, why did they accuse him? My stepdad just doesn't like him and always says he's a bad influence for no reason. Quick question. What about his nephew? Is he now banned from the house and can't be spoken to? If not, then your brother's banning wasn't about the theft. Your stepdad has a problem with your brother for no legitimate reason from what I'm seeing. His nephew is also banned now, but he does have a problem with my brother for no reason. His reason is because it's not his son, not Day Hall. Did you get an apology for being grounded? Did Rory get an apology for being accused? Are you allowed to see Rory again? You are being petty, but I understand why. Not Day Hall. Why is it on you and Rory, the wronged parties in this scenario, to make nice and move on? Rory was slandered to the whole family. He could have been arrested if the cops were less conscientious. You were punished for providing him an alibi and not doing anything wrong. Yes, your stepfather acted abominably and he owes you and Rory apologies. You should not be expected to let this go because your stepdad did you wrong and it means he will let you and other people suffer for his pettiness and pride in the future. Nobody should let him think that's okay. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to split my inheritance with my six-year-old nephew? My grandmother recently passed away and I was the sole benefactor of her will. She wasn't a rich woman, but she was comfortable enough and she left me her house, car and savings. My father is her only child, but he'd made it clear early on when the will was being written up that he didn't want anything from her will, so to give it to me which she did. I have an older brother who I haven't seen in five years. He was disowned by the family for the crap he did, which included stealing from various members of the family. Other stuff I can't say without breaking this sub's rules, but it's bad. He and his then-girlfriend had a one-year-old son when I last saw them. But honestly, they had no interest in him being around our family in the first place and would often use him as a bartering chip against my parents. His girlfriend, who is now his ex apparently, reached out to me on social media the day after the funeral and was all sweet and called me babes and used exes and emojis, which, ew, get lost, we're not friends. To sum it up, she asked when the will was being read so she could come. I asked her why she'd be coming and she said to find out her son's share of the inheritance, obviously. I was beyond shocked at the audacity of this witch and I told her as much, stating there was nothing in the will for him and it had already been read to get the funeral plan she'd set out in it. She was angry at this and demanded to know why he'd not been included in the will and asked who'd gotten the things in the will. I pointed out how she had not acted like family and my brother had been disowned. So really, how could you think he'd be in the will? I also told her that I had gotten all this stuff in the will. Mistake on my part, but whatever. She began to demand I split it with him, stating that that nice house was much too big for a single 21-year-old girl and how it didn't need it as much as her as she had a child to take care of and how I was being selfish and should sign it over to her or give her a cut of the money for my nephew's future and that it was my responsibility as his aunt. I told her no and to not contact me again. 
I've heard she's apparently talking in social media about how I've stolen her son's future and food from his mouth and a roof from over his head. I won't lie, it's stressing me and I'm starting to feel guilty. I don't care about her one bit. She can go curl up in a gutter for all I care for what she put my parents three years ago. But I feel guilty for my nephew. He's only a kid and none of this is his fault. But I have doubts on if anything I give her for him would really trickle down to him. Not today, ho. However, if you wanted to do something nice for him, you could set up a trust in his name that only he will have access to when he's 18. But it's up to you. Unfortunately, sometimes the sins of the father do affect the son. Exactly what I came to say. You can put money aside for the nephew and contribute throughout the years for gifts you would have gotten him for birthdays and holidays if his parents didn't suck. He will be so grateful at 18 to have a way to get away from them because they sound toxic. Not today, Hall at all. If Grandpa wanted him in the will, he'd be in there. It's funny how many vultures appear as soon as there's money involved. Not today, Hall. The binding of the will is absolute. You are not entitled to split it if you're the sole benefactor. And as the sole owner, advise her she will be trespassing if she tries to enter your home again. Oh, she didn't enter my home. This all took place online. But if she comes near the house, I'll do that. Edit. Too many people have suggested it for me to reply to you all, so I'm editing this in here. Thank you for your suggestions about a trust fund for him. When I meet with a lawyer about my own will, I'm going to discuss that with